Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So this is a quick preview for the Tyson Fury vs Derek Chisora trilogy card, which goes down this weekend. Takes place at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in London. Will be televised in the UK on BT Sports Box Office, aka pay-per-view and in the USA I'm assuming this fight is going to be on ESPN now is this card pay-per-view worthy from what I'm seeing no is the main event pay-per-view worthy no and to, to top it all off this is, I, I believe this is actually the most expensive pay-per-view in British boxing history and look at what you're getting for your money it's really, really poor. Let's be real here. You know, Frank, for the fans, Warren delivers. Uh, I, I guess, though, if you criticise Frank Warren, you're on, you're on the payroll of Eddie Hearn. <laughs> That's how it works. When you criticise Eddie Hearn, you speak truth and you're, you know, you're spitting facts and whatnot. When you criticise Frank Warren for daylight robbery, I mean, come on, man. That's that's the boxing scene for you, though. You know, too too tribal. Everybody sucks stick and shills for one side or another. Is what it is, including like fans and shit. It is what it is. Um, but this card is garbage. Let's talk about the main event: Tyson Fury versus Derek Chisora Free. This fight's gonna be as one-sided as a gang rape. Let's be real here. We've seen this fight twice before. Once when both guys were up and comers, decent fight back then in 2011. But Tyson Fury clearly won eight rounds to four-ish, nine rounds to three, that sort of thing. Second fight was 2014, world title eliminator, I believe. Tyson Fury makes Derek Chisora quit. Not remote, it wasn't remotely competitive for any round in that fight. One-sided. And here we are, years later, Derek Chisora can barely fucking string a sentence together. Punch drunk, you know, showing all of the signs of CTE. Uh, Tyson Fury is undefeated uh, champion, coming off wins over Deontay Wilder, Dillian White. He's still operating at a very high level, he's punching harder, he's securing knockouts, and this is the fight we get, you know, Derek Chisora getting wheeled out to be sacrificed um, by Tyson Fury. It's, it's a poor main event, you can dress it up how you want to, you can excuse it all you want, it's a garbage fight, terrible title defence, I mean, I mean, come on man, Derek Chisora, I mean, look at the build-up man, look, look at the build-up for this fight. You know, when you've, when you've got a guy continuously saying, I'm coming to win, um, I'm going to give it all, I'm going to give it my all, friendship goes out of a window, you know, they're really trying to sell this shit, everyone knows what's going to happen, Derek's going to come out in round one, swing like a madman, miss every single punch, and then he'll sit in a corner getting pummeled for a few rounds, then he'll get knocked out. You know, Derek's only got a couple of good rounds in him these days. Takes so much time off in fights where he where he, where he gasses himself, etc. Um, he he really does fight in bursts these days. I would say yeah. I would honestly say he's got maybe two full rounds in him at this point in time. Being knocked out, being beat up. Uh, Thirty eight years old, twelve losses, terrible title defense, and um, what can I say? Tyson Fury should win this comfortably. I would say within the mid-rounds, he'll stop Derek Chisora. Wouldn't be surprised to see Derek Chisora quit again. But more than likely, he just gets knocked out and stopped. Poor fight. What can I say? What can I say? But let's talk about the undercard. Daniel Dubois versus Kevin Lorena. I'm not really sure what to make of this fight. Daniel Dubois, as we know, hard puncher, strong guy, good jab. He does have some talents. Uh, probably not as good as he was originally hyped, but he's a decent heavyweight with upside and potential to improve. There's no doubt about it. Kevin Lorraine, on the other hand, is a cruiserweight coming... Well, yeah, he's a heavyweight who's coming up from cruiserweight. He was the former IBO cruiserweight champion. <clears throat> he beat guys like Fira Arslan, uh, guys who were way past their best. But Kevin Lorraine can box a bit. He is a capable southpaw. Crafty guy, good jab, good counter punch uh, from that. Uh, sorry, he's got he's got a decent counter left hand, a uh, straight left hand. 
Uh, he's, a, he's a good counter puncher. He can box a bit. Decent defense. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually gives Dubois a couple of issues in the early rounds. But ultimately, I don't really believe he's got the power to hurt Daniel Dubois. And yeah, he might win a couple of rounds early on, or at least land some shots and have success, but I just see him getting overpowered in this fight, quite frankly. He's had a couple of fights at heavyweight. He knocked out Bogdan Dino, which doesn't really say much. I mean, a good gust of wind would blow Bogdan Dino over. I mean, he's about as durable as a porcelain fucking pot, you know. Uh, he also beat Marius Vak on points, basically won every single round. I have seen the highlights to that fight, but Marius Vak these days has about as much life as, you know, um, well, you tell me, uh, a, a, a rotting corpse on the highway. I mean, it is what it is. Doesn't really tell you much, but Lorena can box a bit. He does have he does have some skills. He's not terrible, and I'm not saying he is. He was a decent cruiserweight, but I just think he's too small, I don't think he's got the power, I don't think he's got the strength, and ultimately I don't think he's got enough to really keep Dubois off of him for 12 rounds. Might be entertaining while it lasts, until Dubois basically overpowers him, quite frankly. Um, also on the undercard, now this is actually low-key a good fight, I, I can't lie, this is actually a good fight, Ivan Mendy versus Denis Berinchik. For the European lightweight title. Now, Ivan Mendy's been around a long fucking time. Uh, he was the guy who gave Luke Campbell his first loss. He's been operating at European level for the best part of 10 years, I would say. So yeah, beat Luke Campbell in 2015. We're 2022 now. You know, he's been in and around European level for a long time. He's um he's a capable guy with a good guard. He applies steady pressure. A strong guy, durable, never been knocked out, as we can see. Um, really steady fighter. He's a really steady fighter who primarily is best coming forwards uh, behind that guard. And Dennis Berinchik, on his own accord, is also relatively aggressive, likes to come forward, 34 years old. Actually, uh, he's, a, he's an Olympic silver medalist. He won the silver in London in 2012, but his pro career has never really got going. To be honest, he turned pro in 2015, and when you look at his career, he's not really done all of that much, quite frankly. I mean, despite his 16-0 record, despite his silver medal in the Olympics, the one thing I know Denis Berinchik for is boning Lomachenko's sister, who's quite a looker, so that's a W. But apart from that, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to expect, sorry, it's hard to know what to expect from Berinchik, but he's beaten guys like... Simeon, who's a capable journeyman at this stage. Uh, Chanayev, former world title challenger. He's be he's beaten a couple of guys, but nothing of any of any consequence really. Um, but I would say more than likely that I'd still probably lean towards Berenchik just because Mendy's been around so long, and I'd imagine at some point he's going to fall off. I would say that Berenchik is he's got more in the tank at this point in time. But both guys are relatively aggressive. Uh, both guys come to bring it. This could actually be a good fight. I can't lie. Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest, why this fight is on this card. Does Berinchik have some sort of link up with Top Rank or Frank Warren? Who the fuck knows? But it's a good fight. It is a good fight. So we'll see what happens there. That is the most evenly matched fight on this card, by the way. By far. And apart from that, we we have... um. Carol Atoma, who's a light heavyweight prospect, he's actually pretty decent. I wouldn't say he's like an A-level prospect, but he's a guy who is at least worth following, you know. Uh, he's fighting Vladimir Belushki. Um, I guess this is going to be a Frank Warren special. You know, very often we see these Eastern Europeans come over on Frank Warren cards and completely lay down. Who, where's he from? Slovakia. Doesn't really fill me with confidence, quite frankly. Well, he's, he's gone some rounds with Jack Cullen, Shaquille Finn. Got knocked out by Ivanov, who's actually quite a decent fighter, by the way. But he does go the distance sometimes. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I guess that's a decent fight for Atalma at this stage. Hosea Burton, I mean... 
Why is it, I mean, jobs for the boys, Tyson Fury's cousin, I think he is. Uh, I mean, you, I mean, average fighter at best in a six rounder against TBA. We also have Isaac Lowe, and if you follow Isaac Lowe on Twitter, this guy's about as literate as a fucking, um, you know, that, that kid in special ed class who's been held back for four years. I mean, Isaac Lowe versus Sandeep Singh Bhatti. I mean, that's, that, that is what pay-per-views are made of, right? Isaac fucking Lowe on a pay-per-view. Back-to-back uh, -back losses. Got, got beat up by Bernardo Lopez. Got starched by Nick Ball. Two stoppage defeats in a row. Here he is on a pay-per-view in a six-rounder. God help us. And we also have Royston Barney Smith uh, versus Cruz Perez. I don't need to see this guy fight, quite frankly. You know when you can just tell by somebody's name? This guy ain't gonna do shit. This guy ain't gonna do shit. Royston Barney Smith. No, I have seen this guy. I saw him on the undercard of uh, Fury White. I do remember, actually. I mean... We'll see. 18 years old. Maybe I'm being harsh on the guy. Maybe this guy could be good, but... I'm assuming he's a traveller, by the way. I'm assuming he's a traveller. <laughs> I mean... Look at this card, man. Look at this card. I mean, can we criticise this, or or is that not, not part of a narrative? This is garbage. Uh, Tyson Fury really, at this point in time, is doing the Mayweather thing. Just rinsing his popularity. Uh, I mean, this is a mismatch, really, isn't it? This is a mismatch. You can, you can, you know, deliver any excuse in which you want, but it's a garbage fight. I mean, Derek Chisora... Again, in 10 years' time, we're going to be, people are going to be looking back and saying, oh, how sad uh, to see Derek Chisora now when he's punch drunk and um, struggling to live his life. But, you know, this is, uh, this is why, right? This is why. I mean, I was listening to Derek Chisora. Uh, I, I watched a documentary, like, I think it was SMB Boxing. Big up to, big up to SMB Boxing. But he made a video basically kind of detailing the David Hay versus Derek Chisora feud. And I watched that video and he, and he included interviews. And in that video, like, I was listening to Chisora interviews from, when was that, 2011, 2012? And his speech has deteriorated massively. It's, it's insane how much his speech has, like, how bad it's gotten since 2012. Um... Again, I was watching this press conference between Fury and Shizora today, and, and Derek, man, this guy can barely string a coherent sentence together. Uh, what can you say, though? What can you say? Um, but, you know, the Tyson Fury fans, they're going to try and, try and excuse it, and they'll, make, they'll come up with some reason why this fight had to happen and whatnot. Um, but again... What can you say? I mean, this is the boxing community. There's always going to be somebody spinning a narrative. Most expensive pay-per-view in British boxing history. And this is, this is what you get for your money. I mean, I can think of better, better things to spend 26 quid on. I'd rather go down a... Well, I ain't going to say. I ain't going to say. I ain't going to say. But yeah, garbage fight. Garbage card. The only fight in which will be competitive, in my opinion truly competitive is Ivan Mendy versus Denis Berenczyk. Aside from that, it's a shit card. It's a shit card. Share your thoughts below. What do you make of this card? Do you give Derek Chisora any chance in this fight? Let me know. Or do you think Tyson Fury is going to do what he's going to do? And that being knocking out Derek Chisora. Let me know what you think below. It's been your guy Delboy. Peace.